What's up guys? Um, recording from Dubai. I thought this would be kind of an interesting thing to do, but actually I've got fuck all memory on my phone camera and this background music and it, it might all go to shit, but let's see how my Pokemon went from uh, last month. I started out, I actually played Jane Ender's heads up at the start of the month. Um, spoiler on that one, it didn't go very well. Uh, yeah, we played him, I think, like 300 hands and lost 11 binds, something, something like this. And um, we'll make a low light video of that. I just have stream highlights, not the hand histories, because it was played on app. Uh, but yeah, that was interesting, man. Um, anyway, I'll leave, maybe I'll leave some of my thoughts in that video. Um, but let's have a look how we went here. We didn't go good, I know that. Yeah, so we just played ACR, basically. This was our start to ACR. So total results for the month. I'll just grab that. Total results. What are you, mate? Uh, we lost 9,200 bucks, but our EV was for winning 5k, so we ran 14k under EV. Okay, it's not the end of the world, but I mean, we did lose an additional 11 buy-ins at 510 uh, versus Jane Anders, so for the month we lost about 20k. Um, I don't know if I ran particularly bad, I probably didn't run good against Nendez, but <laughs> anyway, how was that in BB? Red Lion, breaking even in big blinds, um, but yeah, what we actually played mostly, let's have a peek if we can into the stakes uh, we played mostly what do we play um, most of our hands occurring at 510 1020 1530 and 2550 on ACR um, and some bomb pots and stuff that were pretty interesting I guess we'll just dive into oh yeah okay so <laughs> I played some 100 200 as well I only played one hand basically I defended Sorry, it's just, this isn't the best display setup here. Okay, let's have a peek. Yeah, so we played one hand, one hand of poker. I actually ended up simming this hand just to see if it was um, stupid or not. Anyway, let's have a little skip through. We're in the big blind and uh, MP Omaha for rolls. So pretty well known high stakes reg opens. I hate these stats. Can we get rid of these? Can we just unload it or something? I don't know, whatever. Some shit stats in the way, that's always good. We're min buying into this table, and we defend the double suited King Eight, uh, King Jack Eight deuce high suit. Anyway, we flop, you know, some sort of relevant blocker and backdoor, but we can't really do anything against a sizable or any reasonable C bet. But he checks it back, uh, turns it to a space. So we've got bottom pair, spadeless, no gutty, sort of considerable for a bluff. Um, I don't do it, and in theory, it would be a bad play. He checks back, and then on the river we elect a bluff, which was like a 0.05 losing decision um, for 75% pot. And he calls, he has top pair, a straight blocker and a flush blocker, pretty understandable call. So that was my not my largest pot, but it was a hand at 100-200, so I just thought that was kind of interesting for you guys maybe. We play a few other hands at 51, we play like one orbit of this. Apparently we win a pot, we just have aces and nobody flops anything. It's not particularly interesting, is it? Oh my god. Oh, it's a, yeah, they have this crazy format on ACR. Um, it's called the No Rat Hole table, where you can only buy in for 10 BB, but you keep your stack for like a week. So some people have massive stacks. Like if we go around the table here, actually none of these guys have stacks. This, everyone was shit stacking this game. But yeah, so whatever, we have AA, we open for pot, um, guy defends, and I guess we're gonna just ram this in post. Hard to know if this is a perfectly played decision, but I think aces with a diamond, whatever. What can you really do? We've got like three quarters pot effective. Oh, sorry, it's, it's like 95% pot effective, but whatever. Okay, we didn't get called, great play. And now, let's get into where we actually played a bit of volume. Let's show all of these hands. And let's sort by biggest pots, winning and losing. All right, we, the biggest pot, um, we played, we actually won. Yay. Always nice. I really hate all these stats on the screen. Sorry about this. Maybe I can disable this. Too much of a whale to figure this out though, am I? Save HUD position? All right, let's do that. Save HUD position, let's just mark it off. Give it a save. Why am I sitting over there? What is this? So yeah, we open pre, 2.7 blinds, get 3-bit, by reg, we call, 
Apparently there's two flops. It's going to be a spoiler for what's to come. Um, but he bets, yeah. These spots are kind of annoying because if you flat, you know, we can we can basically never fold any turn. Like, I mean, you could arguably fold on an ace, but we can basically never fold any turn if we flat. Um, however, he could check fold some hands uh, on, a t on a turn club, you know? Like, maybe he has two pair and my flatting range makes a straight, like say the turn is a king, queen, or 10 of clubs. Like he can probably check fold, like two parents and shit in this situation. So when we're 50-50 equity wise, I don't know, it just feels like a possible mistake to flat to me in this spot. Kind of a weird one, um, but yeah, I, I shove, he calls and we run into dry top two and we've managed to win both flips. So running good for once. Oh, this one is cool, this is a bommy. So in a bomb pot, it's uh, 5BB usually. Sometimes it's 6 though. Um, but anyway, this one, I, I think it's a 5BB. 6-way bomb pot. Uh, we flop dust here. Um, we, we are deep with a bunch of people in this particular hand. But yeah, we flop dust, bottom pair. Everybody checks through them. We turn 3 of a kind. Um, I like to bluff with this. Like I feel like a lot of flushes have to just fold uh, to the turn stab. So we stab it up for third. We do get a caller. And it goes heads up, so it's like sometimes I'm just running into pocket ace, pocket tens, 10 8 10 4. You know, that's just how it is sometimes. But if you've got to decide what to bluff with here, a 4 does seem better. Like, I was thinking, man, do I want to have 10 8 here maybe? But then it's like, well, then they have a 4 more, which is kind of bad, you know? Because they're going to block his ease with their 4. Like, maybe they got a 4 flush, for example. Um, in any event, I decided, whatever, let's just ram this one in for about 80, 85% pot, whatever the fuck it is. Uh, he calls, and he has a 4, actually, with a flush. So no hizzy for the man, but he does make the kind of hero -y call. Interesting call. Um, kind of a good call, probably a good call against me. Um, but yeah, so we get kind of fucked on that one. What else goes down? And a bomb pot, we just hold. With two pairs, shoving into two people, not too interesting. I feel like this was an annoying spot, whatever this was. Okay, so we've got an open and a call. 2.5 BB open. We're going to continue here. It's marginal to continue. I think that flatting player is the fish, though. So I don't totally hate this decision. It's kind of whatever. Um, I don't lead here, which is also kind of interesting, but whatever. And the fish bets, what is that? He bets a pretty healthy amount, three quarters or so. I decide to flat, reg check folds, and now we turn a gutty along with our bullshit. I could also consider like donking as a bluff here, because we only have SPR 2, and I don't think we can fold. Um, but whatever, I check. He pots it. I don't think we can fold, but maybe we can. It's like one of these gross spots, right, where we're in trouble against a set and some higher flush draw over pairs and stuff, so I don't know. Could have played this like shit, but I just felt like you can't really fold this kind of a hand. And we get it in twice, and we lose to a set twice. Yeehaw. Um. What else goes down? What is this? We pay a man off? We don't have much. Blind v blind, okay. We limp, limpy checky. Ah, uh, dry top two, and he just has it. Ah, uh, yeah. So we do seabed here. It's kind of an interesting decision whether we see it or not. I just RNG these, like in these kind of spots. I just RNG them. Um, when they, when I think they're close combos. Anyway. Uh, yep. Check pot, call. Deuce. Checky. I mean, I just don't really see how you can fold this. Like, I, I get having a six is kind of bad. Having a queen is kind of bad. Having a diamond and a spade, honestly, kind of bad. But top two. Feels like a hand that's just tough to fold on the run out. We paid off, he's just a nit peddler, as they all are really. Yeah, so I don't know, some interesting shit. This one, this one's interesting too, where we just flop straight flush somehow. Oh, and a three bit pot, right? Oh, this guy's a fish as well. So we're up against a fish here. <laughs> flop him dead. I take the check back, pretty understandable. He bets the turn, we flat with like min money behind. These spots are also kind of funny because you just have like no no money whatsoever. Like the reason I don't shove here is because I think sometimes they're bluffing but they like river something and then they don't fold for like the crumbs behind. 
Whereas if you shove, like they legitimately have to fold some of their bluffs because the board's so locked up, even though it's a tiny, tiny amount. But he jams it in on the river. He's actually made a low straight here. <laughs> so it's kind of a weird one. He had um, bottom two with a gutty bluffing the turn. So it's quite a random play by him. Not, I mean, I'm not really sure what he was up to, but I guess he was calling my jam. Anyway, that's one of the fish that play uh, 5k. He plays like four tables and shit. He's not the worst fish in the universe, but he's good action for the low rake structure, that guy. A lot of these hands are just coolers. I make a bad defend pre and get punished. I guess I'll show that one. This is a bad pre-flop defend. Just a losing play triple suited. It's actually slightly losing single, so this is quite a punt triple to defend this hand, but I felt like the reg was quite weak. Um, so I just wanted to fuck with him, plus fish BB. Anyway, it goes three-way to the flop. I think I consider a donk. I'm not sure if I go for it. I do actually go for it. I do actually go for it. I mean, like, obviously, check raising his hands are also fine. He's going to flat the flop. Uh, we're going to pile it on the turn. Pretty understandable. And guess what we run into? Should be obvious to everyone watching. Uh, tops is flushy, and he wins them both. So, yeah, that's a rough ride. That's why you don't flat that hand pre, I guess. Ace King King, losing some shit, whatever. The problem with sorting by big pots is they're all just coolers. Like the weird, the weird interesting hands are often like limped pots or like, you know, things that aren't particularly big. Bluffed a couple of bombies. I mean, as you can see, my red line was okay for the month, so I didn't do end of world bad. Maybe I'll just skip down the stakes, see some other big pots. Like I said, my phone battery is running low, so might be the play. All right, so we lost a pretty healthy one over here. Yeah, this might have been a rough ride as well. This is like one of my first, I think this is as soon as I went on ACR. Okay, so we call a raise pre, we get squeezed in the back and we overcall. Okay, and it comes king, 10, deuce. So we've got the pair, the jack of clubs and the rapster. Interesting spot. Do I take a donk here? I pot donk, yeah, it's it's strong. I actually don't mind this. I was thinking, man, getting this in multi-way is pretty rough, but as, like, leading it pot, it's not the end of the world. Like, I block them having the flush draw. Like, obviously, my hand's extremely hard to want to just check fold, but I, I can make them fold some pretty strong stuff leading in, especially when this guy's, like, even deeper with the guy behind him. So I'm putting a lot of pressure on the three better here, who I guess I said was a fish on the other hand. I guess I was wrong. He's probably a reg. I can't remember, to be honest. I, I, that hand I meant I was talking about before, the King Queen 10 8 that I flatted small against the 2.5, I think I thought he was a fish at that time and might have just been wrong. But anyway, we pile it in. He, he says, fuck you, I'm not folding. So he's probably got it. And uh, apparently we missed both. He's got AAFD. So we can't get it, get it done against AAFD. 36% equity. Yeah. Not the best, not the worst spot. Ah, oh, yeah, this is a bomby, right? Like, yeah, full buy and bomby. It was after this hand that I realized, like, buying in deep to a bomb pot table is fucking bad. It's just bad. You're just giving EV away. So I decided not to lead here, like, with a low wrap and a club, because obviously getting it in multi-way is pretty rough. Um, but the problem is, the pot is fucking massive already. It's 1100 bucks. like, it's very, very hard to want to lay down in this spot. So I decided to cold call this small raise. I just don't think I can fold. And then once like the stacks start flying in, like I also can't fold. <laughs> so I just put myself into a spot that I don't really want to be in, 27% equity. But when they, if they don't have a flush draw, like if they both have a set or if they both, you know, on the two pair kind of buzz, like my hand's just so golden. But yeah, guy has set flushy against nut flushy. So yeah, I don't know. It could have been a cooked off buy-in. It just feels hard to fold uh, to the bet small raise action in front of me, like considering the pot size. So there's like already 1100 in the pot and it goes to like third pot, min raise, you know, we got a rappy, tough to fold. I don't know, man. It's kind of an annoying fucking hand, to be honest. Did some guy blast one off to me here? I think he might. Oh no, it's just a bommy. This dude comes in leading in the bommy, leads half pot. We'd min jam it. He gets it in. He's got queen, queen, deuce, deuce. All right, mate. Unlucky. I guess that was the fish. We found the fish in the end. Oh, this is a bit of a tilter. Your boy goes, you know, he gets optimistic and blind be blind. Raise pre, I defend it. 
a half pot stub. I got a gutty, I got the jacks, I got the back door. I call, turn a jackie, fill in checks. We decide to value bet here for two thirds. Villain calls and the river's a duck. And I decided to put the hammer down and go for the go for the value. And yeah, get check called by aces. It's obviously what was gonna happen every time I decided to do that. Yeah, but pretty standard looking hand I'd say. Maybe the turn decision, you know, you could do a bit of both. But yeah, I don't mind the hand. Hmm, whatever. Could look through all the stakes to be honest, but I might just peek into 1020 and then get out of here. I'll try and play some real hands of poker uh, this upcoming month. Sorry for not putting in any volume ever. <laughs> I just don't take my play um, too seriously at the moment. I guess I'm busy doing other stuff. But yeah, it's been fun. It has been fun playing these bomb pots, playing decent stakes again and shit. The software in ACR is absolute aids, but yeah. Do we want to look at any of these hands? They're not that good, are they? I mean, here's why, you, I'll show you, here's why you don't open this hand pre, okay? You don't open this in the cutoff. I decided to open it with these shit stacks anyway. Get three bit, don't fold. Top here, flushy, sweet. Get it all in, lose. Man of the set. I mean, this is not a three bet either, but whatever. Whatever. We're just all having a bit of fun, aren't we? Playing some PLO. So yeah, that's it from me. Um, check out the Jane Anders low light video. Hopefully that'll be funny. I mean, it was expensive for the amount of hands and hours that we played, but I, you know what? I did learn a valuable lesson. Um, he was basically saying that he figured out a lot of how I play based on just watching me, you know? And for some of you who followed a bit, uh, I said that I didn't really want to play heads up on stream because I know that I'm just too far away from GTO. Like, it's too easy to exploit. If anyone actually wants to pay attention, they can be like, oh, he's doing this too much. He, oh, he doesn't do that enough. Oh, you know? And learn quite a lot about what I'm doing, you know? And yeah, I got a bit punished in that way. So even though I already kind of knew that, it was valuable to like have it uh, taught to me, you know, the expensive way. Because now I'm not, I'm not saying I won't play heads up on stream, but I'll certainly be more hesitant to play people who are willing to play me if I assume that they've seen enough of how I play and whatnot. And I probably have to go back and review some of my plays so I'm not just, you know, being too exploitative in spots or, you know, just deviating from um, what I should do in theory just due to my lack of knowledge of what I should actually do. I should look into it more if I want to take heads up more seriously. But yeah, it was a, it was a good game. Catch you guys next time.